Hi, I'm Dr. Oliver Sarter. I'm medical director of the Tulane Cancer Center, and I'm down in New Orleans, Louisiana. It's really a privilege for me today to be able to present a synopsis on targeted rated pharmaceuticals, really just give a high-level survey of what's going on and what we can anticipate occurring in the near future. As it turns out, molecularly targeted radiation is now here. Targeted radiation delivery really starts with a radioactive isotope. We call that the payload. And then somehow you have to be able to get it to the cancer cell or adjacent to the cancer cell. And that could be in the stroma surrounding it. And we're using either typically antibodies or small molecules to be able to serve as that targeting device. Now, it turns out that almost everything that we're doing today is systemically administered, although there are some targeted radiation therapies, not molecularly targeted, that you can target using intraarterial infusion, for instance. That's a little bit of a separate issue. As a dual benefit here in terms of imaging and therapy, it turns out that the whole field of theranostics is now breaking open. And here on the right-hand side, are a couple of images you're being able to see with prostate cancer, renal cell, glioblastoma. And to be able to image and treat is something that is unique, exciting, and moving forward very quickly. The theranostics, I think we all understand, that's really the see it, treat it, uh, we typically are going to be using some type of low-dose diagnostic radioisotope in a PET scanner to be able to determine the presence of the cancer or something that is surrounding the cancer and specific for it. And then we use another treatment, and that is the high-dose therapeutic isotope in order to be able to deliver the payload and hopefully have a positive effect. So Theranostics is really developing at this time at a remarkable rate. We have a variety of targeted radio pharmaceuticals that have been developed um, over the last several de decades, initially starting uh, with some that are targeted toward lymphoma, not commercial successes. Radium-223, you can argue about whether or not it's targeted or not, but it is targeted to the stroma that is surrounding the osteoblastic lesions in prostate cancer or other cancers, FDA approved in 2013. A lot of excitement around dotatate, being able to handle the neuroendocrine tumors, FDA approved in 2018, and now we're looking toward the future. I'm going to specifically mention PSMA, which is a transmembrane protein. It is almost, but not completely exclusively expressed in prostate cancer cells, highly upregulated in prostate cancer cells, and very conveniently a target because it is expressed and a much smaller amount in other regions. Now, there is the possibility of some salivary expression, but interestingly, that varies according to whether or not you're using small molecules or antibodies. The antibodies really don't affect the salivary glands very much. And there could be a little bit of renal uptake, but interesting, that's more for small molecules, not antibodies. And if we look at the PSMA data to date, and I'll show you data here from Michael Hoffman at the, the Peter Mac, um, what you can see is a lot of activity as measured by PSA declines and also radiographic responses. Um, there are additional non-registrational trials with this agent that continue to build excitement. There is a registration trial called the VISION trial. And this is PSMA, Lutetium 177, a pivotal trial using biomarker selection the biomarker selection actually is a Telix product with PSMA 11, gallium 68, taking individuals who failed at least one prior novel hormone and at least one prior taxane, PSMA PET positive, being able to pick the patients according to that uh, diagnostic scan that is so valuable in the third diagnostic scheme. And then looking at a comparison between best supportive care and PSMA lutetium 617 and best supportive care alone. Absolutely important trial. Without phase three data, we're not going to be able to bring this to regulatory approval. Now, it turns out that there are a variety of other approaches. I, I don't mean to say these are the only ones. Uh, with PSMA, yes, we do have the small molecules I mentioned. The PSMA 11 is a diagnostic agent with gallium 68, but also antibodies being able to target PSMA. 
Uh, we have CA9, which can target uh, renal cell carcinomas, both in imaging and treatment. And then we have LAT1, which has been used for glioblastomas, image and treat. And of course, all of these are now under clinical trial. In summary, I foresee an explosion of new molecularly targeted radiation treatments in the near future. I think PSMA is going to lead the way in both imaging and treatment. Uh, there are a variety of new drug applications in front of the FDA in America with regards to the imaging component. And we're now having phase three trials that are maturing and will hopefully be positive. And I think that the power of theranostics will truly define new targets and we have new molecules that will be brought forward into clinical trial. And this theranostic approach will help us ascertain efficacy in a rapid way. But very critically, clinical trial designs will be key for regulatory approval. You can't just give it, see it, treat it. You have to be able to design the trials properly. I suspect it'll take randomization and appropriate comparisons, and that's what the regulators will demand. For those who are involved with the field, enjoy the ride. The new wave is here. Thank you very much.